Occlusal reduction is carried out using a parallel sided medium grit round ended burr. In this situation the buckle cusp is reduced to a depth of 1.5 to 2 mm to allow room for metal and ceramic. The outline of the cusp is retained at all times to maintain resistance form. The palatal surface is then reduced to a depth of 1 mm to allow for metal only. Again, the outline of the natural cusp form is retained. The functional cusp bevel is carried out to a depth of 2 mm on the palatal cusp for the upper tooth. Following occlusal reduction, the surface is refined using a fine grit burr. Interproximal reduction is carried out using a fine pointed medium grit burr. The burr hand is supported by the free hand at all times and a smooth action is employed to avoid damage to the adjacent tooth. It's possible to insert a small strip of metal between the prepared tooth and the adjacent tooth to prevent damage. The interproximal margin is then prepared using a parallel sided medium grit round end burr. The degree of reduction will depend on the amount of ceramic show required and will vary between 0.7 and 1.5 millimeters. Buckle surface reduction is carried out to a depth of 1.5 millimeters to allow room for both metal and ceramic. A deep chamfer or shoulder preparation is achieved using a parallel sided round ended medium grit burr. It is important that the outline of the gingival contour is followed so that the margin is not readily apparent. A smooth continuous action will ensure a smooth margin. The buckle surface is prepared in two planes to follow the natural contour of the tooth and ensure even reduction. The occlusal surface is then refined to ensure that there is adequate reduction on the buckle surface for ceramic and on the functional cusp bevel. The palatal surface of the crown is usually finished using metal alone, so the degree of reduction is in the order of 0.7 to 1 mm. A chamfer margin is achieved using a round-ended medium grit parallel sided burr.